Yeah. Hi, my name is Brian Gubb. I'd like to introduce you to my family. My wife Karen. Hi. My two beautiful daughters, Amy beautiful. and Melissa. Hi. Hi. And my three ugly sons, <laughs> Wade and Quinton. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and we're building an earth ship, a house built out of car tires and other recycled materials. It's his dream. His, his dream. dream. <laughs> No, it's all, it's our dream. No, it's his dream. His dream. We're building and your dream. dream. You know, houses are a lot easier to build. <laughs> <laughs> At least it doesn't cost us anything. Here's a copy of our plans, and you can see we are building a split level home. The lower level here, we've excavated a big hole in the ground, and we're going to have a lounge and a couple of bedrooms. That pile of dirt there is actually clay that we'll be putting inside the tyres that we're using to build the walls. On the upper level, we're going to have our kitchen, dining room, and a couple of other bedrooms. And, and that's up where that big pile of clay is up there. And that clay will also be used to go inside the tyres on that upper level. What I'd like to show you now is the construction of the wall. Here we have the clay bank, which has been excavated at a one to five incline. Here we have broken brick which is used as drainage material and any water flows out through this drain down here which is made out of carpet cores and we've just drilled thousands of holes in them. Here we have two layers of vapour barrier, plastic vapour barrier, which is protected on both sides by recycled polystyrene sheets that we've got through the Waikato Waste Exchange. Here we have the tyre wall each tyre weighs 200 kilograms when it's filled with clay, making every five tyres one tonne of wall. And it's resting on a concrete foundation, which is 750 wide and 200 millimetres deep. Here we have a tyre wall that is eight courses high, and the, the tyres are laid just like you would with brick. When it comes to a half brick, or in our case, half tyre, we split a tyre in half, and screw the flaps to the tyre adjacent to it. So here we have sort of a one and a half tyre at the end of the wall. Here we have Karen filling buckets with clay and Amy, my daughter, is carrying them over to Richard and Richard is putting as much clay as he can by hand into the tyre and once he's pushed as much clay as he can into the sides of the tyre, he'll get his rammer and you'll just compact it a little bit. And then Amy will bring the next bucket over and dump it in there for him. And we do that until the tyre's full. We don't worry about compacting it too hard because we have a hydraulic press that does the bulk of the work for us. Once we've got as much clay into the tyre as we can, we put a steel band around the tyre. Now the steel band goes around the tyre to constrain it when we put the hydraulic press in. Without the steel band, all that happens is that the tyre stretches. And once the steel band is on and Richard's got it clamped up, we'll get the hydraulic press. We just slip it inside the tyre. like so. Then we start up the tractor and we press it in and we do that two or three times as we go around and then we've got a tyre where the clay is really hard. We've got it running at about 1200 psi.
here I'm checking the level of the tire. Every tire has to be perfectly level so that the wall doesn't tilt. We also check that the two tires adjacent to each other are perfectly level, and that's perfect, so it's now ready for the next tire. Okay, boys, we just had to lift this tire on. This is the tire that we already pressed. One, two, three. And we get it into the right place. We're on the string. And we got that string. Just push it. Just come on. Okay. Checking a bucket of dirt. And then we just ram it top. Okay, next bucket. And this is all there is to it until it's full. Just ram it nice and tight. It actually gets a definite sound to it when it's packed tight. Okay, here we are putting, or Melissa is putting mud into the void. And so it's just a stiff, wet mud. You just throw in there as much as you can. Later on, once we've um, got the walls finished, the whole outside of the tyres will be all plastered with a, an adobe plaster. Once I, uh, Melissa throws a bit more dirt in there, she'll throw a tin can or two in there. Or it's not tin actually, an aluminium can. Tin cans would rust. So This helps with the drying process. And it also um, lightens the amount of clay that you need in the void. Less likely to be falling out. Or less likely to have it falling out. Okay, we have chuck another can in there. Another two on each side. And that's how you have the how you fill the void. And normally you don't do quite that much. Normally you put a, your first layer in and then let it dry and then you put your second layer in and let that dry before you put your final rendering over it at the end. As you can see we've got a tire wall here. Now this is not what the finished product will look like. What we're going to do is put an adobe plaster right over the whole lot and the final plaster will actually be a red clay that we've got up on top of the ridge and this will be what it looks like. So in contrast to the yellow clay that we've got here what, that, that we've excavated, we've got a red clay that we'll be using for our final rendering. And it'll look beautiful, it'll be a nice reddish brown finish on the adobe. Here we are on the top level of our earthship, and one of the features of the earthship is that along the north facing side of the house you have planters. And in the planters will be all our veggies and herbs and that sort of stuff, right growing in the kitchen. Also the same will be on the bottom level, there'll all be flowers and vegetables growing on the bottom level as well under that north facing glass. Now this is all watered through a grey water system where you have your laundry water, your bath water, your shower water, all your grey water going through the planters and there'll be wicks strategically placed all the way along the planters to keep the soil nice and moist before it runs out into the bush and waters the native trees and fruit trees and different trees that we've got planted down of where we're standing now. Another one of the features of the earth ship is the thermal mass. Because the tyre walls are so thick, almost a metre thick, they keep the earthship cool in the summer and warm in the winter. In fact, for 365 days of the year, it stays around about 17 to 18 degrees Celsius without any artificial source of heating. Other features of the earthship are um, you take care of all your own waste in the way of composting toilets of one form or another. Also, generate as much electricity as you can through PV panels or in our case we've got resource consent to use, uh, put it in a mini hydro system in the stream behind us. Other features of the Earthship that we've mentioned are the, to provide all your own food 
And of course, one of the other main ones is the, is the monetary one, where it's something that anybody can do. You don't need to be a master builder. Anybody can do it on a very limited budget. All the tyres are free. Just about all the materials that you've seen us use here today have been free, with the exception of the concreting and the, the vapour barriers and the galvanised reinforcing. Everything else has been provided free, free through either the waste exchange or businesses that have just got stuff that they were going to throw into the landfill. So it's great for the environment as well, giving a lot of these products that would be rubbish uh, uh, an end use, uh, a resting place, so to speak. As far as the roof goes, we'll just be having a conventional roof. Um, we'll be using it to catch our own rainwater, so we'll have a rainwater system for all our water needs. We'll also have solar PV panels on the roof for our electricity and whole solar hot water systems as well, so that we can be completely independent of the national grid. As far as our electrical needs, we'll have about 300 square metres of roof, so that should be ample for what we need to do. It took us quite a while to get a structural engineer who would actually look at the idea of building an earthship here in New Zealand. Almost everybody that we've spoken to had never heard of the concept, but we finally did find a structural engineer who was willing to sit down with us, and he devised a few different things that, um, that we had to do to make it fit to the New Zealand Building Code. But now we've got our permits, the Waikato District Council were very good and very helpful for us with the things that we needed. And so yes, this is New Zealand's first, first earth ship, permits and all. I can't wait to have the kitchen finished and ready. Oh, I want a bedroom. <laughs> You want a bit of steak? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I want a bit of steak. Really I want a bit of steak. I want a bit of steak. Get a plate. I can't Get wait till the last tyre's finished. Yeah, that'll be great. You want the last tyre? Get the roof. Uh, well, in the roof, of course, yeah. Okay. What about and the floor? swimming pool. And the plastering. Onions? Yes, please. And the swimming pool. Just more onions. Onions and sausage.